everybody, welcome back to the Creative Yacht Podcast, and today we have a very special episode. Um, we are not doing filmmaking, but today I have probably the most special guest, my wife, Angelica. Hello. Hi. So today That's I wanted to... That's the first time you said that. I think I like what, it. Wife? Yeah. That you've heard me say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like introduced me as. Well, get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, for those of you that don't know, we just got married uh, last week. Uh, but we've been together for 10 plus years now. So I wanted to do a podcast together to kind of just talk about our relationship and what we've done for 10 years and what you hope, Angelica, for our marriage and our future. Mm. And maybe we'll do it again next year, see how the first year of marriage went. (laughs) Um, And then, yeah, we'll figure it out. But first question I want to ask you is, um, what do you think has been one of the keys to a lasting relationship that we've had over 10 years? I think something that we've always talked about is our communication mm-hmm. and the way that we communicate and how we communicate with one another. Since the very beginning, we've always been very open about how we feel. If we feel a certain way, we speak up about it never really suppressing any emotions because that's when things start to build up Mm. and no matter how big or how small yeah always communicate always communicate Mm. but also the way we communicate Mm. so we're not very reactive sure you could elaborate on that i know because that is like a problem, I guess, that people can have. Like, yeah, you can communicate, but how are you communicating? Mm. You know? Mm, mm, mm. So, like, we can talk about things, sure, but it's also the way we say it or right. how we approach it. I think reactive is a good word. I think it's, I think. I think we are not reactive. Correct. Correct. I yeah. think it's because we take action on things that we feel Mm -hmm. in a sense of like if you notice something or something that you want to talk about it's not something you hold on to we just talk about it instead of building it up and then it becomes reactive Mm -hmm. by nature of it just like coming out because it 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 boils over because Mm -hmm. there's too many things um anything else that you think obviously our trust Mm -hmm. can you elaborate on trust We've never really hindered one another from living our individual lives. So meeting somebody at 15 years old, you still don't know who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we've been able to grow up as individuals, but also as a couple, I think has a lot to do with trust right and trusting the other person Mm -hmm. like not everything that i did involved you of course and not everything that you did involved me we went out we did separate things Mm -hmm. but i think that was that's truly one of the keys in my opinion to our relationship was the fact that we really prioritized like individualism Mm -hmm. i guess within ourselves Uh, as much as having a relationship i think we both recognize that because we met so young, like you said, we still needed to find out who we were. But that didn't necessarily mean like finding ourselves in other relationships, mm-hmm. like with partners. It just meant growing with your partner, but finding out who you are in terms of the type of person you want to become, the career that you want to build. Um, and also talking about the future that you want, like what type of family do you want? Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are things that we really prioritized. We talked about young, like I think because what our I, future? Yeah, yeah. We always talked about our future very young, and I think that those conversations sometimes don't happen until later in a relationship, mm-hmm. or they happen when there's two. Um, what's the word? Like very developed individuals who are not willing to like grow or change for one another Mm. 
we had those conversations very young so that we were able to kind of mold this relationship into what we always talked about it being. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah. I think something else that I really think helped our relationship was the fact that our family came from similar, not similar backgrounds, but in a sense that we had similar values Mm -hmm. growing up. And I recognized that early on with you is that you were definitely different among girls that were younger and like, you know, teenager. Um, You resembled like a mom early on and you had really strong values (laughs) Yeah, like that's sick. sick. <laughs> no, I, no think, I know. I th- I... Like to me, that's a really good thing. Um, it, it meant that you had morals and. Um, but also, like boys at fifteen years old were not interested in that. So I think I, I think agree. regardless, like because we you never were dated always... anyone. You never no. were with anyone before me. We were always very different than other people our age. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I was always the mom. You can ask all of my friends, the mom of the group, the responsible one. Mm -hmm. But it made me who I am, so. What do you think marriage means in our relationship compared to us just dating? I think... I don't think it's going to change much. And here's why I say that. Okay. Because I feel like you should never stop dating your significant other. Mm. However, in marriage, there are certain things and conversations and decisions that happen that will be different from dating. Mm. Like when we want to start thinking about having a family, how to raise a family, you know, where right now we have our holidays all figured out with both sides for the last 10 years. But like when kids come into the picture, how does that change? Things like that. Mm. But I don't think much is going to change, and I don't want much to change, to be honest. I don't think much is going to change because I think prior to getting married, we already thought about our life in a sense of it being um, conjoined together. Like Something I've always said is like why I work so hard is for us and our future. Mm -hmm. And like I know that you think similarly in the things that we do now are going to set us up for our future life, kids, homes, whatever the case may be. Um, I just think now it's just, you know, solidified the fact that every decision that we make has to be one that is made together Mm -hmm. rather than, um, more of like an individual decision. But I also feel like that was already happening. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that much is going to change. Why do you think we thought about that so prominently early on like why was that such a big thing for us and why it doesn't feel like that's a super normal thing to think about in a relationship as like a young couple to think about your future a lot more than you do as an individual does that make sense are you asking like why we thought the way we did sure yeah I think because we always knew our end goal Mm. and like what we both want as individuals for our future, but also as a couple. I think it also, I think what I'm thinking of too is just like, I think you get you start thinking about that stuff when you realize that you're dating that person, mm-hmm. like the one. Yeah. Hmm. You start to picture the future. Right. You start to see what you've dreamt of or hmm. envisioned. When did you realize that I? Oh, don't don't ask. You it's don't very no early on. You have no idea. Oh, really? Yeah. 
How early? Like high school early? Like yeah. s- sophomore year early? Um, <laughs> <laughs> to say that it was love at first sight would be cliche, but like I knew you were the one. Mm, just back up a little bit. There you go. I knew you were the one for a long time. So, yeah, you can't ask me that question. Okay. I you did. have the opposite <laughs> answer. Okay, so when did... You. I think, so I don't have a definitive answer, but I think... I'd like a time and a date. I, <laughs> good luck. You're not getting one. Uh, I think when I really started to see... I think the big determining factor, and I don't think this was the pivotal point, but I think it's a pivotal point in my head. I have two answers. Mm-hmm. The first one is going into college, that summer... Okay. When... Mm-hmm. That's, I broke, are we gonna, mm-hmm. yeah, I broke us up mm-hmm. for a day mm-hmm. because I was influenced by other people to think that I didn't need a relationship going into college. I listened to them and I said, this mm-hmm. isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. I'm going to college. I want to have fun. I want to do all these things. You I were heartbroken. Single. Yeah. I want to be single. I want to party. Who did I think I was? <laughs> That's <laughs> Okay. Okay. So nother. yeah, I don't know who the heck I thought I was, but um, and then I came to terms with myself no more than what ten hours later. No, it was like a whole day. It was the next day afternoon. You were on your swings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went to your mom's house, and I remember walking in. I, th- I don't know. I don't think your mom was like happy with me mm, at that not. point. <laughs> I think that was the first time I've seen your mom actually mad at me ever. <laughs> um, and then I look out the window in the kitchen and I just see you on the swings, <laughs> just like really sad. <laughs> <crying>. <laughs> and then I went out to the swings with you and we talked and I think it was just me recognizing the fact that like my decision to break up with you was really directly influenced by other people's like opinions opinions and not true to who i was and the fact that i like actually really loved you at the time and i think by me changing my decision in that particular moment that quickly was like a really big stepping stone for me and like a turning point for me to recognize the commitment that i was willing to make well i remember one thing vividly that you said because we were we had just turned 18 I'm glad you remember. I have no idea what I said. Blacked out. Same thing when I proposed Proposed, to you. No idea. Um, It was just... How did you word it at the time? I remember what you were trying to say, which was like, I was scared that I was 18 years old. Or you, you said, I'm scared that I'm 18 years old. And that I could have potentially met the person that I'm spending the rest of my life with. Mm, Because I was fearful that it was too early and that I wasn't going to be able to like experience experience life life or whatever. Okay. So that's what I was trying to say. I don't think that was your head talking. I think that was something else talking. Mm. But. Okay. Yeah. I think. I do think that for me was a big turning point. For sure. In terms yeah. of commitment for sure. to us. But I think the other thing was that when I dropped out of school and started to pursue a career, mm-hmm. not just like small summer jobs, like mm-hmm. an actual career, and then seeing you, you know, go through school and pursue your career as well, I think made me realize how um, significant everything was starting to become and how I needed to start thinking about everything. Um, so I think that was another turning point was when we both started focusing on our career ambitions. Mm-hmm. Wow, that seems like a century ago. What? All of that. I know. Reliving that. Yeah. All right. Um, as someone who has grown up in a household where your parents worked really hard to provide for you and your siblings, how do you think that has shaped the way you think about your life and your future family? Hmm. I've done this a couple times. Good question. Thank you. So, yeah, my parents worked extremely hard to provide a better life for my siblings and I. 
than they had, especially my dad. My dad came from Italy, 22, didn't know anything. He barely knows English now. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) But he came to America to live the American dream, and he worked his ass off to do that. How that's shaped me? One, I don't know, because times are different, and it's really hard to live the same life, like, financially now that they did then. But I think it's finding the right balance of setting your kid up for success without handing them Mm. everything. Mm -hmm. Do you think you grew up with that balance i think so Mm. but now people may look what i think that how i was raised was different but i think we balance each other in a regard of how i like how i was raised and how i see you know the fact that i necessarily wasn't handed everything you know when i was younger of course you know i was very fortunate too my parents were great Mm -hmm. but up to a certain point it was all up to me Mm -hmm. to do everything Mm -hmm. um so i think we both have like different backgrounds in a way, but similar mindsets towards it. Yeah. Like I remember since I was little, I mean, my parents are entrepreneurs and they've kind of instilled like a business mindset into all of us when we were very little, like anything that we would do, we would have to work for. And my dad would literally give us money so that he made us understand the value of money was to work hard. But whether that was helping him do the yard work or I, I don't even know. I, I did a lot of yard work with him, but he taught me a lot of things outside. Yeah. For people that don't know, which nobody knows, <laughs> she is the most handy person. She hung up all the TVs in our house. All the picture frames, everything. All, all the curtains, I can't the rods. Do any of I'm the outside person. I'll do the gardening, the lawn, all that stuff. Give me a drill. She's good with drills. <laughs> and a screwdriver <laughs> yeah. or a hammer. The fact that you are and you enjoy hanging up TVs and picture frames. I, I yeah. can't do that. I know. I think I have a good eye for it, too. Yeah. Well, you taught me the whole tape thing. Mm-hmm. Measuring. Measuring yeah. the wall and, like, tape, tape and the nails. Poking and, the yeah, holes. Yeah. All right. I know. So anyway, he taught me a lot of things, but all of that was things that we needed to do if we wanted to make money. Mm -hmm. So like from a very young age, like we didn't have allowances. It like wasn't a thing for us. You would just help around the house and you would get, we're talking like five bucks, but as a kid, as it a means kid, something. I was stashing that away <laughs> and saving it when I wanted to go buy a new, I don't know, what was the the things called? Like a Nintendo? A Nintendo game. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The flip things. Big gamer? Yeah, it was. Me, Antonio, and Christina, we all, we do like the conjoined. Oh, okay. Interesting. Thing. Yeah. Mm. So I think. Back to your question, finding the right balance between setting them up for success, but also making them understand that you need to work hard Mm -hmm. for what you want. From a partner's perspective, obviously you were your dad's daughter, Mm -hmm. but looking at it now from a different lens... What do you think, how, how did his style of working and how hard he worked slash missing things in your life impacted you in how you perceive parenting and like balancing work and life? Does that make sense? Yeah. So I feel like it didn't 
really resonate with me until I was older. But yeah, my dad was our primary what's provider. that word? provider. Mm-hmm. And my mom raised us, so she was the one running around between soccer and dance and tennis and gymnastics and all the other things. And I don't think it really, I didn't know any different as a kid, Sure. you know? So like he would come home, we would be in bed when we would leave in the morning, like it would be in the morning and at night for a while. And then it wasn't until I think I got older that I noticed even things in school where, like, my mom would come to things, but, like, some kids had both parents come to things. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking about this right now, but it didn't change how I looked at anything then, but I notice now that maybe how I would want to raise a family would have Hmm. both as much as you can. (laughs) You know, because at the end of the day, I know that we've talked about it too. And like, there are times where you sacrifice family time now for certain things Because of the life that you hope for us one day. Mm -hmm. But I think you're doing those things now so that when the time comes that we could have a family. Be as present as possible. Yeah. Given the fact that the career that I've chosen and hope to do for a long time requires a lot of sacrifice, not only for me, but you as well. And I'm not saying that my dad was never around. No, no, no. Of course. But he worked a lot. So like day to day. And it's like, I think that's an interesting thing though, is like, of course, from your perspective, you would love, you know, more time with him as you were younger. Like, there's also a thing of, like, you, your family has what it has, and you, he's, you know, him and your mom have built what they have because of how hard they work. Mm -hmm. So there is a balance to, I think, some points in your life, I think it's important to recognize that you might need to focus on work a little bit more than family. And then sometimes family takes precedent over work. So I think the balance that everyone, everyone tries to find in reality, will always be imbalanced based on where you are in your life at a particular point. But I also think at the, exactly, and I think at the time that they did it, like I said, it didn't, I don't think that I was affected by it in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember feeling neglected or like feeling like he wasn't present because he was yeah but looking back on my childhood so like i think at the timing that they did it it probably worked best Mm -hmm. because i don't really remember it right i was so young point right that like they did what they had to do and i really don't remember that Mm. period of time but when i look back on it and I think back on it I remember Mm -hmm. but at no point did I feel neglected or like he wasn't there for what was important because he came to every dance recital every competition no your dad is like a he's a very big inspiration to me as well um but I want to move a little bit to like growing up you said your mom was kind of the 
person that raised you guys did everything mm -hmm. it was like the she she stayed at home um I know we've talked about this, but my question is like, do you think there's a struggle for girls who come from a more traditional background where the man is the provider and that potentially not being as socially acceptable anymore? For example, like the whole like boss babe mm -hmm. type of mentality and you coming from a more traditional background and having a mother that was there for you and was a stay at home mom. And I know that we have friends whose moms were stay at home mm -hmm. moms. Do you think there is a struggle now of like thinking that that is socially acceptable or just like, what is your perspective on that? Yeah. I think there are some people who feel that if you're a stay at home mom, this is just my opinion. Hmm. Don't cancel me. That I don't you, think anyone's going to cancel me. <laughs> that, um, you're just like this housewife mm. that you, I don't want to use the word mooch, but like you stay <laughs> home and you do what you want to do and you raise the kids and you, you know, but like, I think it also over time, this whole like boss babe mentality mm. is... I don't know if we should talk about this. Why? Just like the whole, I don't want to say feminist movement. All right. We don't have to, you don't have to, I, I think it's more about just like, how do you see the value in like having a mother that stays home to help raise okay, the kids? Okay, that's a different question. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. We could get <laughs> away from that. Yeah. That stuff. Because it's like, it's when women started wanting to be seen as equal, mm -hmm. which I won't get into, but I'm getting into, <laughs> and like wanting to work and be individuals and be independents and make their own money. That sometimes it got forgotten how important the role of a stay-at-home mom really is. Yeah. Mm. But I think sometimes, too, it's like... It depends on who you are and what, going back to what we said, what you see for yourself as an individual and as a couple, because there are a lot of women who are very career driven. Which is great. Yeah. They go to school for all of these years. They come out, let's say, a doctor, and they have a very successful career for themselves mm -hmm. where yeah then they have a child they go on their leave and they go straight back to work but for me i guess not that i'm not career driven but i saw the value in being raised by my mother and not Going like a babysitter, a babysitter, daycare. yeah, or a daycare <laughs> or things like that or whatever, mm. and that's always something that I wanted for my kids one day, as well. Okay. You might need to. Finesse. No, I'm not going to cut any. Of it. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I think you answered. I think it it could have been better the way I phrased the question, but I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. Um, what is something that you hope? that I continue to do in our relationship and something that I can improve on. And don't say the sink in the bathroom. Don't say. <laughs> what is something that I hope that you continue? Correct. I think understanding that our roles are not 50 50 and i mm. think that kind of goes hand in hand with myself too and things that i don't want to change but aside from how traditional we'd hope to raise a family and live in a household i think there are also some things that are untraditional like you do the dishes 
I love doing the dishes, but can, I hate the laundry. You can clean. Yeah. And you can make dinner. And there are some... So what you're saying is I'm pretty much perfect. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, if you could do laundry, that would be great. Uh. You can put it in. That's fine. But like certain things like that, that understanding that we're a team mm. and that if I'm not 100%, you're there. If you're not 100%, I'm there. Mm. But no one ever has their own like split roles. Right. I agree with that. You know? I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think we share a lot of roles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as long as that continues, I think the house will be running smoothly. Okay. In regards to things that you do, <laughs> um, living on this side of a highway. What's funny is I could probably take that out. Really just say it wouldn't matter. No. I know. Um, in regards to things that you do, I think just being. Is this good or bad? This is good. Okay. This is still good. Great. Great. Keep going. <laughs> um, allowing or continuing to allow us to do things like this, that we're having these conversations. Because mm. I feel like this goes back to our communication. And... That's all you got. There was, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> That's okay. All right, you could talk some. You could talk some. Okay, shit. so some, some things shit. that we need to change. Oh boy, here we go. We're gonna come back in a year from now and see how this has the been bathroom improved. sink. All right, here we go. Just, I have to. Okay. You just gotta clean the toothpaste out of it. <laughs> That's all. But no, there's really not much to be honest. Maybe just making your clothes into the hamper. Try for the three pointer. That's why I haven't played basketball. I can't make it. That's in the hamper. Reason. Well, it's just so much. It's it's. I think it's more fun trying to like toss uh -huh. it in, and then when I recognize that I miss, I just don't go get it. No, I'm saying that's the only reason you don't play basketball. Oh, you're calling me short now. <laughs> you and Tomas coming in with the short jokes. <laughs> what were you gonna say? <laughs> you said it. I guess I did. <laughs> Um, okay. No, there's really like nothing that I would change. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. My I turn. feel like, oh, wait, I'm not done. Uh oh. All right. Um, so, bathroom sink. Closing the hamper. Closing the hamper. And yeah. I guess maybe just recognizing when you forget to do something that I ask, which you do. Okay. Like yesterday, you forgot to unload the dishwasher, mm. but you recognized it. And I you did. And I apologize. Okay. You had intentions to do it, but you didn't. <laughs> didn't do it. It's the thought that counts, so, right? Yeah. I appreciate I those things. I guess I, maybe that's on a, a positive side. Mm. Okay. Okay. Your turn. Sure. Um, oh something that I hope you continue to do is, I think, be, I hope this doesn't put pressure on oh, you, but be a good, boy. like, support oh. system. Because mm -hmm. I think that you balance me really well in me being very, not that I'm outgoing in a sense, but, like, I, I want to do a lot of things. I want to build a lot of things and not that you don't but i think that you are more um realistic potentially i don't know if that's the right word um, but i think you're more balanced in 
recognizing when maybe an idea needs to take like a day of thinking mm. or like uh, a, couple, a days. couple days or just like, hey, let's not do that yeah. type of thing. Um, so I think what I love about you is that you do help me balance a lot of like things that I want to do and you just make me think a little bit more clearly about certain things. That's good. Mm. I'm glad you feel that way about me. Yeah. I also am glad that you do my laundry mm -hmm. and fold it <laughs> and put it away sometimes. <laughs> um, I also think that what I really enjoy is that you're actually honest about my work mm. and like you're good at giving me critiques or just like feedback. Like if you don't like something, you're not shy to say that you don't like something. Um, so I think it's just like, don't make it sound like it's often. What? That you don't like yeah. something? No, no, no. What I mean is like, it's good, to, part, it's good to, like... Yeah, it's good to have a partner or someone yeah. that like is honest and doesn't need to just always say yes or like, or it's amazing or it's amazing type All of the thing. Time. No, I think that's yeah. something I, I love too. Something that you could improve prove on potentially and i think i've told you this before is following through with your commitments i think that's a big thing for me because i'm a big believer in like doing something or committing or saying you're going to do something and then like i follow through with almost mm -hmm. everything i do all right i do my absolute best too so i think something that i would like to see more of is if you're going to say you're going to do something don't say it follow through okay that's it that's what I, that's, that's, that's my, that's my, uh, improvement idea for you. Deal? Deal. All right. Next question. Hmm. Kind of answered this already, but what challenges do you face being with someone who has a job that isn't necessarily stable and also requires a lot of travel hmm. and the potential of even more Travel. travel touching on the first thing you said mm -hmm. about stability is one thing that i love about you is that you have never ever made me feel like your work is unstable mm. so Thank you for that. Because you never want me to worry about that. Um, in regards to the traveling, it was definitely hard in the beginning. At least our first year living together. Mm. Because we did distance. I don't want to call it long distance. People get upset about the topic. Your brother. <laughs> we didn't do long distance, but I was in Pennsylvania for six years for school. And Carlo was in Jersey. It was a two hour drive. It was. Wait, wow. No. Way to diminish it, though. Oh. No, what I meant was like, <laughs> yeah. you're trying to build this up. I'm no, just no, like, it was right. a two-hour drive. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh. Okay. So that's it. But it was six years of yeah. traveling back and forth and not living together. Sure. So at the end of that six years, when we finally were able to live together, it's like you waited all this time. To finally be able to live with the person that you want to. And then they have to leave for a week for work. I think it hit me really hard in the beginning because we have such great roles in the house mm -hmm. and systems that we have in place. So when you are gone... I have to pick up the slack on all of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was very hard in the beginning to do all of that. But there's part of me that feels like that six years of distance helped. Helped. 
because I also understood that I was, goes back to the same thing you were saying, I was okay as an individual, Mm -hmm. you know, like we had our individual lives. So I wasn't sulking over the fact that you were going to be gone and like depressed, but just continuing to live life, you know, Mm -hmm. it became extremely hard when we were living in Cherry Hill Mm. and I didn't have any family or friends around me within the hour distance that we were and you were traveling a lot the most that year that you had ever been then up until that point up until that point yeah i feel like even during the whole shooting of the feature Mm -hmm. where we didn't see each other like at all yeah for like two and a half ish weeks yeah Three weeks. So that became extremely hard too because I didn't have any support around mm. me. Now, being back here, it's been a little bit easier. Mm. But I think I'm also in a different headspace where I understand that, like, this is what you do. Right. And. But I also think it does help the fact that you are. Five minutes from family. Family, yeah. We also have all of our, our friends, friends here. Yeah, and our friends are great. Yeah. Um, our family's great, mm-hmm. so that definitely it's helps. Like also, like your friends are great, but my friends are also your friends. Like, yeah. In the sense that my friends, they also knew you before me, but they also take care of you. Yeah. As I would hope they would. Yeah. So that definitely helps. Mm. Does that affect you? What? The way that you you think about my travel? Or no, the, like, are you affected by your traveling in our relationship? I think not as much yet. Mm, I think sometimes, yes. I think there was a point a couple months ago where, when was it? I think it might have been October this past year. Where I think I was home for maybe like mm, mm-hmm. ten days, the whole eight, eight to ten days, the whole month. I was just bouncing. From I was place in to place, California yeah. twice that month. Buffalo was in so many different places that month, and I think I remember at a certain point I was just exhausted, and I, like I really just wanted to be home. Mm-hmm. So I think if it gets to the like a certain level of traveling, yes, it does affect me for sure, but. I think part of what I love doing and like part of why I love this career that I have in my life essentially as an individual is because I get to travel and experience new things and meet new people. It's, it's like part of the job that I really, really love. Mm -hmm. I think to a degree it's going to get harder as like kids come into play. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think that something that I've tried to do is when we have time together to be more present, because I think in the beginning you know, even now still, I think I, I struggle with it a little bit, but you could even attest that a couple years ago, I couldn't sit still. I couldn't sit on the beach for 10 minutes. I was always thinking about work, always mm-hmm. like, even when I wasn't working, I wasn't here. Mm-hmm. So I think I remember that. hopefully you can agree that I've done a better job at recognizing when I need to be more present mm-hmm. with us. I think also just realizing that what you do is very physically demanding Mm -hmm. and part of what I do in my career is also ensuring that people are getting proper rest and recovery (laughs) I think more so now my job is more mental yeah but I'm saying that it's still it's still a very I mean 12 hour day like it's mentally and physically exhausting yes but that also goes hand in hand with rest and recovery. Of course. Yeah, of course. Like being able to shut everything off. Mm. I think I said to you after we got back from South Carolina, I feel more inspired than ever now mm-hmm. because I had we had those couple days of just relax. Relax. Relaxation. Not just a couple relax. days of relax. <laughs> now we sound like my dad. 
now we're speaking dialect or broken English. Oh, um, man. Okay. And I guess to go with over, I guess, like to like encapsulate a lot of these questions, what do you define a successful life to look like for you? What does a successful life look like to you? You asked me this at dinner the other night. Remember? I do remember. I have thoughts. But I couldn't answer it. I know. I hope that you thought about it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have an answer. Okay. What I see as a a successful life. What is this? Okay. Let me combine these two questions that I have. What is a success? (laughs) Okay. Let's Let's try that again. What does a successful life look like or what does, what do you envision for your future life to look like? Because I think those go hand in hand, to be honest. You just rephrased the I know, same question. But I hope that maybe by rephrasing it, I was like, oh, I no, understand I, now. It's not that I don't know. It's just that I can't answer it yet because it hasn't happened. Mm. So... I feel like I don't want to box. Yeah. I see. Mm. I don't want to right. set this like elaborate more standard or expectation mm. of what I perceive success as yet because I don't I appreciate that answer actually. No. Yeah. I just feel that for a majority of my life, I've always looked at the future Mm. and always thought so far into the future about what I wanted and where I wanted to be. And I want to start living in the present more and just enjoying where I am and what I'm doing and who I'm with. Mm. And seeing where life takes you. I think that's a great answer, actually. How do you perceive... Uh, it's Success is subjective. Of course. But yeah, I, don't, I can't answer it. You already did answer it. I know I did. It was a great answer. Yeah. Okay. Um trying to think if I have any for you. Okay, because I'm out of questions. Mm. <clears throat> what were you most impressed with throughout our wedding planning? You always said that you were felt like you were going to be a guest. Oh, so at like the wedding. going to the wedding. Yeah. Or being at our wedding. Yeah. What was I most impressed by? Yeah. Uh, is it wrong to say that I was m- really impressed by the fact that everything went smoothly? Mm. No, that's great. Yeah, I like, agree. I, I don't know if it's necessarily the right answer to like pinpoint like oh I loved that flower mm. on that chair type yeah. of thing that design piece. But I think it's the fact that you really dedicated so much time in ensuring that when we were there on the day, Mm -hmm. that we didn't feel burdened by anything. And I know that, you know, you and Mandy, the Mm -hmm. wedding planner, you know, worked really hard at that. But not one time did I feel any ounce of stress at all. Like it was, even if there was an issue... We didn't know about it. I didn't know about it at all. And I don't think not, I don't know if there was or not. Yeah. But I think. That's how it should be. Yeah. So I think what I was really impressed by was the fact that how much time you dedicated to ensuring that everything went smoothly and that you, you were very decisive in what you wanted and how you wanted it to look and feel. And I think it was perfect. Thanks. I agree. Mm. Can I tell you when I felt? Sure. Yeah. Go for it. It was at our 
decor drop off. When you went with Carmine? Carmine came with me. And I had packed up all of these boxes and I labeled oh, I know what you're gonna say. everything. Mm. And I had my list and we unboxed everything. And Allie's sitting there asking all of these questions. Like, do you have this? Do you yeah, have that? do you have this? Where is this? Do you have this? Is um and it was so is reassuring the right word? Sure. Um I feel like there's another word. Well validating. So, okay. There you go. That's a that's a good word. It was yeah. very validating of all of the work that I put in mm. that I had all the freaking answers. Right. That she was asking and checking everything off. I've you know, they always say make a checklist, check it off. It feels great. I know you do. You have your checklists and you do things too, you know. But it was like next level organization. Organization. Yeah. And I left there feeling just like a weight was lifted off my shoulders and I knew that the day was gonna go. Perfect. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah, that was only three days before the wedding, though. <laughs> and at that point, for those that don't know, I was in California. He was not here. I was not here. <laughs> going back to that, but going back to having amazing friends, mm -hmm. Carmine, one of our groomsmen, yep. came with me and did that. So, it's kind of a support system. Kind of circles back to a little bit of everything, but yeah. Amazing. That's the only right. question really that I have. All right. Well, I think this was actually really great. I mm -hmm. enjoyed this a lot. It was longer than we anticipated. Yeah. How long was it? 50 ish minutes. We spoke for an hour? Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. Um, I know I did. Mm -hmm. Did you? I did too. All right. Good. Next year, now we have to wait one well, more we, year. I mean, if you want to start a couples podcast. I don't know about that. I, I might just do like some episodes of us just thrown in there here and there. I don't That's know if I could fine. do another one. You should ask me about some like uh film stuff next time. Like quiz you? Yeah, like filmmaker's what wife. What is an ISO? What is Oh, come like on. Like that type of vibe? No, like uh, I can set up a C stand. A C stand. You're looking at it like help me out. What is this thing that's above us? <laughs> I can set up a C stand. I can All right, pack question. your whole When you set up a C stand, yeah. you know that there's a knuckle. Uh -huh. Does it go on the left or the right? The knuckle? Mm -hmm. Isn't the knuckle the thing that it attaches to the C stand? It's that thing right there. So the the right? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. But yeah, it's the thing that attaches to yeah. the C stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that the light can hang off of it? Sure. Sure. So what did, can you just continue what you were going to say because I kept interrupting. What what did you want to do? Yeah, just some like some fun facts. Not fun facts, but like quizzes. Okay. Like what? I don't know. Like about equipment or about That'll be an episode of the last 3 and a half minutes. <laughs> Do you know how to build a Sony Venice out? Yeah. I think you actually did. I did. When you <laughs> broke your leg. I know. All right. Well, stay tuned for Angelica's film Q&A. Mm -hmm. Coming soon. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. See you guys soon. Peace out. So thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Creative Gap Podcast. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, there are a ton of other episodes for you to listen to as well. Check us out on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, whatever you, wherever you want to get your podcast, you can find it. Also, be sure to check us out on Instagram at Creative Gap for future updates, upcoming guests, and a lot of short clips. And if you want to support the podcast in a deeper way, feel free to join our Patreon community. And for those of you who already joined the Patreon community, thank you. And for those of you who are new to the show, welcome. Hopefully you enjoy it. And for those of you who have been here for a long time, thank you. So that's all we got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you next time. Peace out.